So hello and welcome to another edition of our Scrivener tutorial with author Michael Laron. So Michael is the author of over 50 science fiction and fantasy novels and self-help books for writers. His books include the Good Necromancers series, the Last Dragon Lord series and the Android X series to name just a few. His writing is about heroes rising up against incredible odds to be the best possible version of themselves. When he's not writing novels, Michael runs a popular YouTube channel, YouTube channel Author Level Up, where he publishes weekly advice videos for writers. Author Level Up has over 25,000 subscribers and nearly 1 million lifetime views. He also hosts a podcast called The Writer's Journey, where he talks about his life as a writer and new and interesting ideas about the writing life. So, Michael, without further ado. We'll make us up. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Christina, for the kind introduction. It's great to be with you again. I recognize some of the names and faces, so it's good to see some of you again. And we are going to uh, talk about Scrivener today. And we're going to have some fun, and we're going to go more in-depth than the last time. And, Christine, I did notice that there's one person in the lobby. Do we want to admit them? Just or them. Yeah. Okay. What's the name, okay. sir? Uh, oh, the name? Know. It's fine. Just oh, yeah, I won't say. Okay. All right. So we're going to talk about Scrivener today and um, we're going to, we're going to go in depth into this app, but what I wanted to do first, just for those, those who, who maybe weren't in the first workshop is talk a little bit about why you would even use Scrivener to begin with. You know, it, we hear about this app all the time. People talk about it on podcasts. They talk about it on blogs. What is it about Scrivener that you would want to, to use it for? Now, I don't know about you, but when I first started writing, I used Microsoft Word, and I felt like the majority of my writing sessions were spent fighting with Microsoft Word as opposed to actually writing this, writing my story because you know there would be formatting issues, there'd be issues with the tabs, all sorts of things with Microsoft Word. And Microsoft Word is a very generic word processor, meaning you can use Microsoft Word to write a novel, but you could also use it to write a scientific paper or a resume or a recipe book. You know, there's all sorts of things you can use it for. And so what ends up happening is it's kind of a, a jack of all trades, but a master of none. And it's not the, the, the best writing experience in the world if you want to write your novel. Now, what Scrivener is, is Scrivener is a writing app designed specifically for writers. So it is an app designed specifically to help you write better words, Write, write, write better fiction or nonfiction or even poetry if you want to do that. It's designed to help you write better work faster and it's designed to help you be more productive. And there are a lot of tools in the Scrivener suite that can help you do that. So I always like to describe Scrivener as if Microsoft Word and Evernote got together and had a baby, it would look like Scrivener because Scrivener allows you to write, but it also allows you to use your project like a notebook so that everything you store, you can store your, your book in it, but you can also store any research, any outlines, anything like that, and it's all neatly organized. So that's why you wanna use Scrivener, all right? So that's kind of my, I've been using this, this app since 2008, 2009. So I've seen a lot as it has evolved over the years. And I, I like to affectionately call it the caviar of writing software because it is. So um, I do wanna give you a fair warning that we are gonna go over the Mac version of Scrivener today. Scrivener does have a Windows version, but it is not the same. Um, it has many of the same features, but it does not have all of them. So just know that if you use Mac or Scrivener for Windows, not everything I'm gonna show you today is necessarily gonna be on your machine. Um, but in our Q and A session afterward, I'd be happy to to answer any questions about a which 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 version has what feature um, to get you all sorted out. So I'm going to share my screen. Okay, so I am in Scrivener right now. But what we're going to do today is we are going to go from I'm I'm going to show you how Scrivener can help you at every juncture of your writing process. So from the, the moment you have an idea and say, hey, I wanna write this book, all the way down to, okay, I've written this book, it's edited, it's ready for publication. We're gonna cover 
end to end. So we're going to talk about getting your book into Scrivener. We're going to talk about writing your book in Scrivener. We're going to talk about editing your book in Scrivener. We're even going to talk about outlining for a minute. Um, and then we're going to talk about how to compile and get your book ready for publication. So we got a lot to cover. But first, what I want to do is cover some basics. So I'm in Scrivener right now, but if I go to new project, I get this little startup screen. And Christina, can you see this little floaty window? Yes. Here. Okay. I just wanted to make sure. So I got this little floaty window and this is what you'll see when you open the app up for the first time. And Scrivener has a number of templates that it has to help you get started and get off on the right foot. So there's some tutorials here that I would recommend that uh, you check out at your own leisure. But if I go over here to fiction, I'll see that we've got some templates for novel and short story. Oh, uh, I don't think we can see the floaty window, sorry. Oh, you can't see the floaty no, no, window. No, 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 no. I okay. thought you were talking about this window. No, we can't see the float window. Okay, I'm sorry about that. That's fine. Let me, let's see here. Here we go, let's do this. Okay, can you see it now? We can see it now, yeah, brilliant. Okay, okay, thank you. Just, just let me know if you can't see something. <laughs> Zoom sometimes has a mind of its own. So, all right, so we've got, uh, if I click on this fiction here, we've got novel, novel with parts, and short story. These are all templates. Scrivener has designed these to make it easier for you to write these particular pieces of work. If I click on nonfiction, I've got some, some templates for essays and things like that. I've even got some essays for uh, dramas and scripts and screenplays. And because I know that there are people that use Scribden to write poetry, we've also got a template for poetry. Now we've also got one for recipe collections. I don't know anyone who's used Scribner to write for recipe collections, but hey, if, if that's your thing, it, it is out there, all right? So what I wanted to do is just show you real quick, we're gonna be spending the majority of our time in the novel template, but I wanted to draw some attention to the short story template and the poetry template, just so you know that they're there, okay? So I have opened up the short story template here and they're all kind of set up the same way. They kind of, they, they put in the elements that most people are going to need when they're writing short stories or poems or whatever it is so that it can make it easier for you to just get going and writing. So every template, and I'm on the left-hand screen here and we'll go over some of the functionality here in a minute, but uh, I, if I click this short story format here over in the, the, the left-hand side, I have an about this template. And this will tell you what the template is and exactly how to use it. So very helpful for those of you who are writing short stories. That They'll help you basically get ready for manuscript submission if you want to submit it to magazines and all that stuff. So just know that this is out there for short stories. And then I'll show you the poetry one as well. So the poetry template is also, uh, it looks very similar. So you're gonna have over on the left-hand screen, you're gonna have some different elements that uh, poets might need. And then you're gonna have um, a very, very helpful section here that tells you how to use it because poetry is gonna be a little bit different, right? Because you're gonna need to know what your line count is. There's gonna be some other things with poetry that you need. And so this area here where it has about the, the format, will tell you exactly how to get that set up in Scrivener. So Scrivener can be used for poetry. I've actually published two poetry collections and uh, I've used it to publish poetry as well. So just know that it, this is not just for fiction or nonfiction. You really can use this for anything. In fact, I've seen, I've seen lawyers use Scrivener as a way to, to help them stay organized for their cases. So there's all sorts of templates out there and um, you, you can find the one that works best for you. So I just wanted to, to raise awareness to that. Now I'm back in the novel format template. And um, what I'm gonna do here is this novel format template is the one that I would highly recommend for anyone who is just starting off. If you've never used Scrivener before, this is the one I recommend because it's got uh, a number of elements here that will help you get a sense of what you can do with Scrivener, because that's the key. The, the, the big thing with Scrivener is just when you first start learning what it is that you can do, all right? So we're gonna be working in the novel format from now on. But what I wanna do real quick is I wanna just teach you two important things that will help you set your Scrivener file up for success. 
if you do these two things, you're going to save yourself hours and hours of rework. And I say that as somebody who has spent hours and hours of rework in this app and had to go to the school of hard knocks to learn it the hard way. So first things first, we're going to go to preferences. So if I go to Scribner here and I go to preferences, just some of the top navigation, there's a lot here, but I'm not going to go over all of it. I'm just going to go over two things that you need to know. The first thing is we're going to click on this editing tab here. And then in the middle of the screen, we're going to click on formatting. And we're going to get like a little word processor, like a, a mock-up of a little word processor here. And just pretend you're not going to see me do this here. All right, so we're going to do one thing here. This one thing is going to save you a lot of time. It's going to save you a lot of time and effort. Here, you can see I'm hovering my mouse over this, this little uh, icon here. There's a little horizontal bar, and then there's a little down arrow. What we're going to do is we're going to drag this little cursor, the top one. We're going to drag this over to 0.25 inches. All right. And you're probably wondering, Michael, why are you doing that? Why do I care about this? Well, in Microsoft Word, I bet, or, or any word processor that you use, I bet you use the tab key to indent your paragraphs. Most people do that. There is a way to automate, automate your indents in Word, but most people don't do that. They just hit the tab key. The most important thing I can ever teach you with Scrivener is to eliminate the tab key from your muscle memory. The reason we want to eliminate this is because when we get ready to export our file to EPUB format or ebook format, it creates all sorts of issues. In fact, um, your, your, your book won't even be accepted for publication at a lot of different places because tabs are not acceptable for ebook formatters. And, and there's, there's a lot of reasons for that. We won't go into that on this call today, but you want to get rid of your tabs. And what Scrivener will do is it will automate your indents so that every time you hit the return key, it will indent your paragraph for you so that you never have to worry about hitting that tab key again. So just please remember to eliminate the tab from your muscle memory because what, what I did when I first started is I imported all my projects and they had all these tabs in them and I couldn't get them to, to export properly. So if you do this, you will save yourself hours, <laughs> all right? Now, the second thing uh, I wanna show you is this backup tab over here. This is one of Scribner's best features how many times, if you've used Microsoft Word, how many times have you made a change and then all of a sudden realized that you made a mistake and you realize you didn't, you made that mistake three months ago and you have no backups of your files and you have to go back and delete things and it's kind of a pain, isn't it? Well, Scribner has an automatic backup feature where it will automatically back up your work no matter what. So they wanna make it very easy for you to write and never lose work. So if you just want to make sure that this automatic backups is turned on and you can even, you can even have it back up your project when you close, when you close it out. So if you close it and forget to save it, Scrivener will still back it up for you. And um, you just want to make sure that that's clicked. <laughs> Please make sure that that's clicked. I, I've, I've talked to too many writers over my uh, seven, eight years here uh, who have accidentally lost work for, for whatever reason. And uh, we don't want you to do that. So just make sure that uh, you have your backups enabled. All right, so another thing I wanted to hit is you might notice that uh, my Scrivener looks a little bit different th probably than yours. And that's because I have dark mode enabled. And I just happen to like dark mode personally. I like the contrast a little bit better and the contrast looks a lot better uh, when I'm doing these demonstrations, it's easier to see. But if I did wanna change that, I could go to Scrivener on the top left here and I could go to appearance and I could uh, select light if I wanted to. Now, this depends on your version of, of Mac OS. Assuming you have the most recent version, this is how you would do it. Um, not all the most recent version or the prior versions support this, but I could, we can go back and I can change it back to dark. All right, so we're going to do dark for the remainder of the day here. All right, so one, a couple of things I want to go over real quick is just some, some of the, the housekeeping basics. So Scrivener is set up uh, a little bit differently than Microsoft Word. So over on the left-hand side here, we have what's called the binder. And the binder is where everything in our project lives. So we've got our manuscript here, but you'll also notice that we've got characters and places, and we've got uh, front matter and research. And if I expand all of these here, you'll notice that I've got a book in here already. And then I've got uh, some other things like uh, research. Everything in here is neatly organized. 
And that is the great part about Scribner because you can keep everything where it needs to be without having to worry about it. And when I'm ready to export my book to ebook e format, it's only going to export my manuscript folder. It's not going to export all of my research and all that. It can live there without me having to worry about um, it being there. All right. So this is the binder and the binder is very, very useful. And I can also do a few things here. So I've got this manuscript here. You know, I, I, if I click this little plus button here, I can add a document. So you can see here, I would add it a document at the very bottom. And if I wanted to, I could uh, double click and I could rename it. Or say, just name it chapter 34. And, uh, you know, I, I decided I don't want any of these documents here. I, I just want to delete some documents. So I can click this plus button or the, um, the trash can button and I can move it to the move it to the trash. I can highlight a bunch of documents if I click and then just hold the shift key and then click wherever I want. It'll it'll select a range and I can click the trash can and up oh, there. There's my whole manuscript in the garbage. <laughs> you know, you can get it back by going into the trash if you wanted to do that. So I can I can select and I can delete and I can add things very easily. If I wanted to, let's say that, um, you know, I want to add some more documents. I've got chapter one here click that little plus button. I can even add a folder if I wanted to. So if I click this little drop down arrow, I can create a new folder. And let's just say, you know, my book is organized in parts. So I want to call this part one. And I'll do that. And I want chapter one to go into part one. So I can just click chapter one here. And then I can drag it into the part. And look at that, it's all neatly organized. And I can click this little arrow to collapse it if I wanted to do that can click this little arrow again to expand it. And so Scribner makes it just very easy to organize everything in your binder. If you double click, you can rename it. It's very intuitive, very easy to understand. All right, so this is the, this is the binder. This is where everything in your, your, your project is going to live, all right? And the binder is important in many different ways. Now over here, we have our word processor. All right, so I, I don't know what they what, what the actual official term for it is, but you know, if I create a document, this is where I'm gonna be writing. So you can see the cursor appear here and everything you see over here is gonna be pretty straightforward. It's very similar to Microsoft Word. You know how this movie ends. We've got styles, we've got fonts, we've got the ability to bold, italicize, underline, uh, change our line spacing, all of that good stuff, all right? So that is the, the basics of Scrivener. If you, if you know this, you know how to use the app. Now the question is, how do we start using it for things that we really need? So let's say, I, I imagine that many of you, I'm gonna delete this here. I imagine that many of you probably have books that you've already written and you just wanna get them into Scrivener. So how do we import manuscripts that we've already written into Scrivener. I'm gonna, I'm gonna teach you how to do that. You might be in the middle of a manuscript right now and you might be watching this video and you're like, oh my gosh, I love this app so much. I, I'm just dumping Microsoft Word. I just wanna jump into Scrivener and, and pick up where I left off. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. Now I have on my computer here, I have uh, some, some documents and I've got a novel and I've got a novel. I'm just gonna drag it into Scrivener here into the binder. And as you can see here, it, uh, it, it, it imported it successfully. It's great, but you know, we, have, we have a little bit of a problem. The problem is, is that I, I have my whole novel, but it's all in one long continuous scroll. It's kind of like a Word doc. We don't really want that because Scribner makes it a lot easier to handle this because I, I showed you over here, I had all my different chapters for the novel before I deleted everything. Wouldn't it be nice if I could just click each of the different chapters and only worry about the chapter on the particular page at, at, at the time? So, you know, I could, if I wanted to, I could uh, start working on this and I could, uh, if I wanted to, I could scroll down to the next chapter and I could put my cursor right here and I could right click and I could select split at selection. And then you'll see over here on the binder that it created a separate document. It's kind of messy though. So if I go back to the original one, this would be chapter one. And you can see here now I only have chapter one in this particular document, which is great. But now I have to rename it. I got to click and I have to rename it. And I've got to, and I got to rename this one and I got chapter two. 
And that's cool and all, but now I have to do that for all of the chapters in my book. And this is how, you'd be surprised, this is how a lot of people will import their novels into Scrivener, but there's actually a much easier way. So I'm going to delete this and I'm gonna to go to import and split under file. So I'm gonna to go to file and I'm gonna to go to import and I'm not going to import files, but I'm gonna import and split, all right? So I'm gonna bring in I'm going to bring in the novel, but I'm I'm going to give you a fair warning here. If in your in your Word doc, if you have everything broken out by section breaks, like if you use section breaks between your chapters, and then you use chapter header styles, this will make your life a lot easier. And if you don't do that, um, I would recommend that you do, because then you'll be able to do exactly what I'm going to show you. So I'm going to select here this little option, it says split using the outlines or the documents outline structure. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna read Microsoft Word and it's gonna bring everything in nice and magical. So I'm gonna hit import and then look at that. It brought in all, everything in my book and it brought in all the different chapters. So if I click chapter one, I only have chapter one here. So I can bring the elevator down. That's pretty nice. If I click chapter four, you can see that I've, I've only got chapter four in each of these documents. And what I can do is I can click between any of the chapters at any time. So this makes it much easier to navigate compared to Microsoft Word, where it's just one continuous scroll. Just with a click of a button, you can click around in your chapters and, and jump around anywhere you want in your novel. That makes it easy. But I do notice that we have a little bit of an issue here. We've got chapter one here on the top of the top of the document. And we've got chapter one here in the binder. Now you'll notice that if I click in the binder, I can rename chapter one and I can rename it to like a prologue. But you'll notice that the actual document itself here in the word processor, it didn't change. So they're mismatched now. And, and that's, that's not gonna do because Scrivener, you, you don't wanna mismatch stuff when you're exporting your manuscript. So what I ultimately wanna do is I just want Scrivener to handle the title Whatever I, whatever I name it in the binder, that's good. Scrivener can handle that and it can do a lot. I don't need this over here. This is duplicative. So what I'm gonna do is I can fix this with a simple, simple fix. So I'm gonna delete everything here. I'm gonna delete everything I just imported. It's gonna throw it in the trash. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing I just did. I'm gonna click on the manuscript folder. I'm gonna go to file and I'm gonna go to import. And then I'm gonna go to import and split. And then I'm gonna bring in the same file, it's gonna select it here. And then there's this little box down here that says remove the first lines of text when splitting by outline. I'm gonna import and let's see what happens. If I click on chapter one, you'll notice how, see how it took, up, took away my style, my header style. So there's, no, there's none of that chapter one text in there now. If I click on chapter four, I click on all, through my, all throughout my chapters, you'll notice that it removed it. So this is how you can get your manuscript into Scrivener as clean as possible. Um, it's not like Word where you have to have chapter titles. You can rely on the binder, okay? So that's how you import your, your manuscript into Scrivener, and it just takes seconds. Now, that's not the only thing you can import into Scrivener. Scrivener makes it easy to import other things as well. So I, let's say I want to import an image. I'm doing some research, and I'm on the internet, and I see this image of a character that I just, I, I love, and I just wanna, I wanna bring that image into Scrivener, all right? So I've got a little button down here, I'll collapse the manuscript folder, and I've got a, I've got a folder down here for research. They already did this for us. So what I'm gonna do is go to file, and I'm gonna go to import, and this time I am gonna collect or select uh, import files. And I'm gonna bring in an image that I've already downloaded, and I got an image of Buffy. And if I select it in the folder, I have an image of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. So I can, I can just import that directly into Scrivener. How easy is that? All right. But that's not all I can do. Let's say I want to bring in a PDF. So I've got a PDF that I want to bring in. I can import. I'll go to import, file, import, files. And I can bring in this PDF that I have. And if I select it, look at that. I've got a PDF that came in just like that. And I can, I can even select it. I can copy and paste it into other documents. Super easy.
Now let's, I'll take you one further. Let's say I'm on the internet and I find this great website and I want to save the website to Scrivener. So this is, this is where this Evernote functionality comes in. So I can go to file import and I can even import a web page into Scrivener. So I, I'll select the web page and then it'll, uh, it'll ask you for an address. You have to put in the official internet address, unfortunately. And I'll just put in this one and it'll ask you what you want to call it. All right. And I'll just call it, uh, just call it website. And this will take a minute because what it's going to do is it's going to go to the website and it's going to pull the website into Scrivener. So this is, this is the, the web page that I entered. This is, uh, this is a, a web page on my site. This is exactly what it looks like. And if you, if you were to click any of these links, it would actually open up a browser window and it would take you to that destination. So this is a great way to save websites and things that you find as well as a part of your research, for example. All right. So great, great tool, great functionality. Now what I want to talk about is um, you've gotten your book into Scrivener or you're ready to start writing, but uh, you know, you got to outline your book first. All right. So Scrivener offers some great outlining support and some great pre-writing tools as well. So in this, in this, uh, in the binder here, this is, this is one of the reasons why I recommend using this notebook or this uh, template. I'm just going to delete what I have here. I've got under this characters tab here, if I, if I highlight this, and then I'm going to create a document underneath this. Now, before it just created a blank document, didn't it? But because I've got a character, a character one selected, Scrivener does some hard work for me. So if I click this plus button, it creates a character sketch. It's just automatic. So now I have a character sketch that I can adjust. So let's say I've got a character name here and um, it's just, this is maybe a little small. So on the bottom, bottom left here, I can zoom in by clicking this 100% and we'll go into 150, all right? And if I want to, I can name the character and I can put in her age and I can put in you know, where she lives. And then I can go through and I can fill out this, this page and I can make my character sketch for this particular character. If I want to create another one, I can just hit the plus button and it'll do it for me. And what if, you know, let's say this isn't, this isn't what I want. I don't want all this stuff here in this character sketch. Well, there's a, a button here called template sheets and I can actually adjust the template. So if I go to template sheets and then character sketch, Let's just say, you know, I don't, I don't even want to, I don't, I don't care about my character's goal, motivation, and conflict. So I'm just going to delete that. I don't care about any of this stuff. The only thing I care about is her, the character's role in the story and their background. Okay. So I can delete all that stuff. All right. So I'm going to go and I'm going to delete the character sketch that I created by highlighting it and clicking the trash can. And then I'm going to click characters and create a, a, a sketch again. Look at that. I, on my brand new sketch, it just created the template that I adjusted. So you can adjust your templates as you see fit because some people, you know, you may want to have a really in-depth um, character sketch. Maybe you don't. So that's, that's very useful. Um, I can even do the same thing with places. So there's a places tab as well. And if I click this little plus button, it'll give me a setting sketch as well. So I can even do this with my settings. Very, very helpful. So I can type in, like I had on the screen previously, Sunnydale, and uh, it's in California. And I can type in uh, the the role, the role in the story, and uh, all the things that uh, I wanted to type in for my setting. So that's also a very, very helpful tool for you when you're pre-writing. Now, if you wanted to outline your your book, you could do that as well by just simply adding an outline anywhere in your binder. So I'm going to collapse these here and then under research, we'll, uh, we'll add another document. And then here, it's just going to create an, an, create a blank document, but we'll call this our outline. And then I can start typing my outline here. So Scrivener makes it very easy just to, to just do whatever you want to do with just a few clicks of a button. All right. So that's, that's, we talked about importing our book. We've talked about some of the outlining support, and there's a little bit more, but we'll hit that 
a, a little bit later. Now let's talk about the writing experience because this is what makes Scrivener what I like to call the caviar of writing software. It's it's it kind of fits you like a glove when you when you first when you when you first fall in love with it, then you'll you'll become more productive. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to minimize everything by just clicking these little arrows here. And then I'm going to go back to my manuscript. I'm just going to expand it by clicking that little arrow and I'm going to go to chapter one. All right. And I'm going to, I'm going to zoom in a little bit by clicking this little button down here on the bottom right or bottom left. And uh, I'll go to 200 because I think that looks a little bit better for this presentation. Now, as I said before, everything up here, you've seen everything up on the top. There's really no need for me to go into that. And writing in Scrivener is, is almost identical to writing in Microsoft Word. So you can see here that I have everything indented, all right, which is great. I've got everything indented and uh, I've got a cursor here. And if I click on this cursor and then I hit the enter key, you'll see how Scrivener automatically indented, indented the, the writing for me. I don't have to worry about hitting the tab key. All I have to worry about is hitting the enter key. That's why I had you do that a little bit earlier. So everything looks nice and clean. But you know, let's say that I'm writing and uh, I, I'm prone to distractions and I don't like seeing all this stuff on my screen when I'm writing. Well, what I can do is I can go over the top of the binder here. I can click this little button and I can hide the binder if I want to. So the binder just goes away. If I click this little button here, I can show it and it can come back. So you don't, you never lose anything. Now, if I wanted to, I could even I'll hide the binder, but I can even hide the format bar above the, the manuscript. So I'll hide it and you can see it hide, it hid the, um, the bold and italics and some of the word processing options. So this is a way to write a little bit cleaner if you wanna do that. And if I want, I can bring them back by just clicking that little blue button and showing it again. If I wanted to, I could show the ruler. So I can click this and show a ruler uh, for those of you who may want that and I can hide it again. And then if I wanted to say that's not enough, I really wanna be able to concentrate when I'm writing in Scrivener. I can eliminate everything. So if I click this little button here on the top right, it's this little square button. All right, This'll, this is gonna launch me into full screen mode. All right. And can everyone, Christina, can you see my screen yeah, here? We can see okay. full screen now. Yep. Perfect. Okay. So this launches me into full screen mode. This looks totally different. See, it eliminated everything. So now I can only focus on what's on the screen, which is great. It's just a great way to focus. And you're probably wondering, well, where did everything go? <laughs> so if I, if I hover my mouse down on the bottom here, I have, I have a navigation menu. So I can change the text scale. I can change the paper position if I want to do that, I can change the paper width. So for those of you who just want the text to take up the whole screen, you can do that. Or if you want to make it really skinny, you can do that too. Very easy to do. I can click this go to here and this, this brings up the binder. So this is, this is everything I just showed you on the left that was on the left hand side of the screen. And I can just, hover over it and navigate to uh, different sections in the binder if I want, okay? Now there's also a feature called focus and we can change it into focus mode. And I'll show you what this means. So I'll select focus line here and you'll see here that wherever the cursor is, it fades everything else into the background so that you're only looking at the line where the cursor is. So if I can click my cursor around, you'll see kind of how that works here, all right? Now I can also change the focus to the sentence level. So if I've got a paragraph, you can see how it just uh, focuses on the sentence at hand. And I can even do it at the uh, paragraph level. All right, so I can focus on the entire paragraph. All right, and I've got short paragraphs in this chapter, but you get, you get the picture, all right? And there's even a typewriter mode, I, I won't go into that. Um, but then I, I could also, if I wanted to, because I have everything I'll change the width here. You can kind of see, I can change, I can fade the background in and out too. So I can fade it in and out as well. Now, when I'm ready to exit full screen mode, all I can do is I can hit the escape key or I can just click this little button here down in the bottom right. 
and this will take me back to Scrivener. So that's a wonderful tool to, to help you focus and just eliminate distractions in your life. Because we all know we got distractions. I know uh, my email is a problem for me. It's nice to be able to cl click that button and I don't have to worry about uh, uh, what my email is doing at that point in time. All right, so there are more tools that Scrivener offers to help you stay on top of what you're doing here. All right, so the next tool I wanna show you, this is, this is a great little tool here. This is, a, any, have you ever, when you were writing in Microsoft Word, thought to yourself, it would be nice to be able to look at my book on multiple screens? Well, you can do that in Scrivener. So I can click this little button over here on the top right so the little button with a couple lines in it. And this is what's called the toggle split. So now you can see here that Scrivener just, um, just opened up everything, all right? It just has, a, has everything over here. And um, I can see both of uh, both windows here, which is great. But then what I can also do is I can change the chapters in some of these, all right? So I can change change it over to chapter one, and then I've got chapter 23 down here. Um, I can change it to chapter two, and then I've got chapter 23 down here. If I wanted to, I could even with this outline over here, I could uh, select my outline and put my outline on the bottom, and then I could put chapter two up on the top. So I can I can refer to my outline while I'm looking at my, my novel, and if I could even scroll down here as well. Now, some people don't like the vertical, some people like the the uh, or don't like the horizontal, they like vertical instead. So what I could do is if I hold the alt key and then I click this button again, then I can actually uh, do a vertical split screen, which is great, all right? I can do a vertical split screen so I can look at everything side by side, all right? So this is a, a great little feature. Uh, there's even the ability if you wanted to, to create up to four split screens. That's really cool too. So there's some great functionality here. And then if we're ready to, to be done with it, we just click this toggle split. And then um, this takes us back to where we were. Now, what I can also do, uh, I, what I can also do is I can, uh, I can also look at my word counts. So on the very bottom here, you'll see that Scribner gives me a word count for the document. So in this chapter, I've got 1,450 words, all right? And th that's great and all. And if I click this, it gives me some more statistics about, you know, the chapter, okay? Which is, you know, it's, it's interesting. I don't know how, how practical it is for most of you, but what I do want to show you is something that is very practical. So if I click this here and then I go to project, and then I go to project targets. I can now set a word count goal and a daily word count goal for my entire project. So you can see here that this manuscript is, it's uh, 49,772 words. And uh, let's say I want a target of 50,000, all right? And I can, set, I can type in that. So that's my target. That's what I want to hit. That's my word count goal for the entire manuscript. And I want, let's say every day I want to write, I want to write 500 words. All right, we'll just keep that. That's pretty good. All right. If I click this little option button here, then you, you, we have a couple options here. But what I want to make sure that is clicked is the show target notifications. I could even set a deadline if I want to. So there's some good stuff there. If I click on this session target here, I can even de determine like at what time a day my session counter ends. So at midnight every night, what's gonna happen here is that my word count is gonna reset, okay? So let me show you what this actually looks like. All right, so if I click, click out of all of this here, I'm just gonna copy all of this and then I'm just gonna pretend that we're writing. So I'll hit enter and I'll paste it. And then uh, I'll paste some more. see here. If I go back to project targets. Okay. Oh, it, it showed me the notification. For some reason, it didn't show up on the screen. So what you should have seen was a notification that said, 
oh, your, your, your manuscript has reached its target. <laughs> so that's really cool because if you, have a, if you have a writing session every day and you go into full screen mode and you want to know when you hit your word count, Scrivener will actually pop up and it'll tell you, hey, you hit your word count for the day, which is great. I happen to like that a lot. All right. So, and in, in, in if you wanted to, another thing that you could do um, is you could set targets at the chapter level. So if there was a particular chapter that you wanted, um, you know, that you wanted to do, you could, um, you know, say you wanted this chapter. This chapter here is if on the very bottom here, it's uh, 5,800 words. Uh, if you wanted to hit 6,000 words, you could do this at the chapter level too, which is great. All right. So that is some of the uh, additional functionality with, with writing your novel in Scrivener. I wanted to show you one more thing in terms of writing. So if I click on this little eye here, this creates what's called the inspector. All right. And the inspector is great because the inspector, I'll, um, you can see it on the right hand side. And this has some different functionality in it. I'm going to click on this little uh, notebook icon here. And the first thing we can see is a synopsis. So you can put in a synopsis of the chapter here. So let's say uh, hero, hero goes to a bar and you can make that as long or, or, as, or as short as you want it. And then you can even add notes for the book as well, which is helpful. So these notes won't end up in the manuscript itself. So you might wanna say something like, need to remember check for plot holes or something like that. And that'll be there to remind you when you're going into editing that, hey, I, maybe I got a plot hole in this story. I need to go back and look at it, all right? And we've also got down here on the bottom, uh, some things called labels. And when you first see labels for the first time, it, you probably wonder, what is this? This doesn't make any sense. So let me, let me show you how this works. If I click on this no label here, I get a bunch of labels that I can assign to the story and they're, they're, they're named by colors which, okay, you know, great, Michael, that's, that's fantastic. But what I would encourage you to do is click this edit button here. And how I have used it is to use it to, et, use it to label by character. So I can change the red to one of my main character names. And I can, I can change the orange to another character name. And then I'll show you how that, I'll, I'll show you how this comes full circle uh, in, in, in a minute or two. Okay, so I'll click OK there and uh, I'll, I'll assign a label to Lester. All right. And then I can also change statuses as well. So some people like to keep track of individual chapters and, and figure out where they are in it. So if I click this here, I can assign different statuses to a chapter. So I can assign a to do, in progress, first draft, final draft. And if I click this edit button here, I can even change the names of these if I wanted to. And I can even add, I can even add them if I wanted to as well. So very, very helpful, uh, very, very helpful. And then another feature I wanted to show you is the snapshots feature. All right, this is an underrated feature in Scrivener. And the way that this works is uh, if I click this little snapshot here, what it's gonna do is it's actually going to take a snapshot of my, my work at this point in time. So let's say you're writing your novel and you get to a point where you're at a crossroads. And you're like, ah, I don't know if I want to do this or not. Well, what you can do is uh, you can take a snapshot. So hit this plus button. You'll hear a little shutter sound. And then on the bottom, it'll actually give you a snapshot of what the work looks like at a point in time. So let's say, you know, maybe you want to break everything up and you want to start rewriting. Well, this will, this will save everything for you so that you can come back to it at any time. All right. And this is very helpful when you make decisions that uh, maybe many months down the road, you realize, uh, maybe, I shouldn't have, maybe I shouldn't have written that chapter that way, but then you don't remember what you wrote because it's all gone. <laughs> you can save it at the chapter level, which is very, very helpful. And um, let's say, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll start breaking some things up here. I'll start, uh, I'll start deleting stuff and I'll just say, I'll make, I'll make something really obnoxious at the top of the screen so you can and see how this is going to work. All right. And I'll even bold it just to make it even more obnoxious. All right. So let's say that I'm ready to take another, I'm ready to take another snapshot or better yet, you know, I've, I've written it and I, I just don't like what I have. I want to go back to what I had. 
Now I could, you know, you saw me do these changes. I could hit control Z, but we'll assume that we're many, many days into the future. Okay. And you don't remember what you change. You don't remember what's going on. So I can click this little snapshot here. I can even double click it to rename it. And I can, I can just select the rollback button here. And it'll ask me if I'm sure. And we'll say, yes, we're sure. And then look at that. It, it's, it restored everything, everything I had before I started getting in here and, and breaking everything up. So that's, that's really, really neat. And then what it did too, is you'll notice that it took a snapshot before it restored everything. So if I, if I get into the snapshot and realize, oh, you know, actually I like the stuff that I did when I broke everything. Well, I can roll back to that too. And if I wanted to, I could even compare different, uh, different uh, snapshots together. So if I click this compare button, you can see down here, it, it almost looks like a Microsoft track changes. You, it'll, it'll, show you, um, it'll show you what got removed, which was what happened here. All right, so you, you can use this to compare your snapshots together as well. Very, very helpful and useful feature. All right. So that's the inspector. There's just some functionality hidden back there that I always like to make sure people know about because uh, it's, it's, it's a very useful, useful tool. So if I can get rid of the inspector, I, I'll click this little button right here. And then now what I can do is um, we're gonna talk a little bit about editing with Scrivener. So we've talked about getting your book in, we've talked about writing your novel, and then we've talked about editing or we've talked about writing your novel, I should say. Now we're gonna talk about editing, okay? So with editing, Scribner has some tools available to help you edit your novel in style, which is, I, I think is great. There's no issues there. Um, and and what, what it can do, there's, it, do, it does a lot of things, but the one thing that Scribner cannot do is track changes. So I, I think it's just, it's, it's, it's important to let people know this up front so that they're aware of it. Scribner has just about everything but track changes, but it does have some features to help you uh, get around that limit, that limitation. So the first thing I want to show you is what's called revision mode. So we'll say that I've, we've, we've written the book, we're ready to start editing, but we want to keep track of everything that is on the, that, that's in the, it's in the book. You know, you, you don't want to lose track of, of what you changed, when you changed it. And so you want to keep pretty good tabs on that. So what we can do is we can go into revision mode and we can go there by selecting format here up on the screen. And then we can select revision mode and then we'll select first revision here. Okay. And it tells you that you're in revision mode and you'll notice that the cursor just changed color and it changed to red. So now everything I type is now in red. All right, and this lets you know that everything that you're writing from now on is part of the first revision. So everything that's white is your rough draft. Everything that's red is your first revision. I can even switch into second revision if I wanted to by going to format, revision mode, second revision. And then you'll notice that my cursor turns blue. So I can type in stuff and it'll turn blue. So white is rough, red is first revision, blue is second revision. So this gives you a really good way to see how everything works visually in your manuscript. And you can just look at a, at a, at a, at a second glance. Oh, okay. Yeah, I did that. I did that during the first revision. Maybe I need to change that. Or, you know, I did that during the third revision. I need to, to make an update. It just helps you visually track everything uh, in a really neat way. Now, let's say that, um, you know, I don't, I, I'm ready to be done with revision mode. You've got everything all color coded. It's all decked out. You know, your manuscript kind of looks like Christmas. It's all red and green and, <laughs> and blue. And uh, you're ready to, to be done with the color changes. Well, I can remove these color changes by simply going back to revision mode by going to format and then going to revision mode. And I'll, I'll, first thing I'll do is I'll exit revision mode just to make sure I don't stay in it. So I'll, I'll click none and then I'll go back to revision mode. And then I will say, remove all revisions. Now this won't delete anything, 
it's just going to change the color back to white so that all your changes are quote unquote accepted like you would with Microsoft uh, Word. So I'm going to click remove all revisions and then there. So the, the things that I added are still there, but you'll notice that now everything is white. All right. So that's revision mode. That is a, a very helpful feature for many of you that use multiple drafts. Just helps you keep track of everything. Now, the next feature I want to show you uh, with revision uh, is a, just a great feature. <laughs> this is uh, what I like to call the best kept secret in Scrivener. This is one feature that's just like, it's just amazing how they came up with it. And it's called linguistic focus. All right. I saw this and I was just like, okay, I'm, I'm super glad I paid for this. All right. So I can go to edit. Oh, well, before I, before I do that, the, why would you want to use this? I know that when I edit my work, I try not to edit line by line because when I do that, I happen to notice, and this is just my, um, my personal quirk that when I, when I look for everything, I tend to find nothing. So I found it over the years easier to edit in isolation. So I like to edit all my dialogue at the same time and then edit all my narrative and then all my action. And Scrivener actually gives you a tool to do this. And this tool is called Linguistic Focus. So if I go to edit and then I go down here under writing tools and then I select Linguistic Focus, I get a little window here and that window basically, it gives me different articles of uh, speech, all right? And what I can do is I can look for certain things in the manuscript. So actually I'll go to chapter, go to chapter, it's got some dialogue in it. Here we go. Okay, and then I'm gonna go back to linguistic focus. And it looks like it's gonna make me exit out of it. So how I got there was edit, writing tools, here we go. Edit, writing tools, linguistic focus. All right, sometimes uh, your windows get all messed up on you. So I'm gonna select direct speech here. And then look at that. It, it just eliminated everything on the page except for direct speech. How cool is that? Mm -hmm. And it didn't delete anything. It just, it just removed it. So if I click this little fader, you'll see here I can, I can bring it in with a different level of fade. All right. I think this is great. As you're scrolling down, you can see where all of the where all the dialogue is. You can uh, click nouns here, and it'll show you where all the nouns are. And I know some people are religious about adverbs. You click uh, adverbs here, it'll it'll show you all the adverbs, so you can check how many adverbs you've got in your manuscript. You can do it, you can even do it with conjunctions. All right. So I just think this is a great feature. Um, one of my favorite features in Scrivener. This was just added for Scrivener 3, and I just I just happen to love it. So um, again, I know because I know some people are going to be interested in that. You can get to this. It's kind of hidden. You can get to it by going to Edit, and then going to Writing Tools, and then selecting Linguistic Focus. And, and as, another, as another pro tip, if you're ever after this session, you're like, eh, what did Michael say about, he said something about some linguistic tool it looked really cool, but I, I just don't remember how to get to it. Well, what you can do is you can go to help and then you can type in what you're looking for. So if you remember that the name was linguistic focus, you can type in linguistic under the search. And then when you hover over that, it'll tell you how to get there. So that's a pretty cool feature as well. So it just ensures that um, you, find, you find what you're looking for. All right. All right, so now what I want to show you is one of the one of the great editing features of Scrivener. And it's 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 an editing slash outlining feature. You can use it for both. Um, I, this depends on your personality type. So it's called the corkboard. And the corkboard, you can get there by hovering over. Uh, if you go over here, there's this little uh, icon that kind of looks like a corkboard. If you click on that, this will take you to the corkboard and you'll notice wait a minute, there's nothing here. Why, why isn't there anything here? Well, the corkboard, you've got to click on the top level of your manuscript. So the reason there's nothing here is because there's no documents inside of the chapter. So to get to the corkboard, I have to go to manuscript and then look at that. I've got, I've got a little corkboard available to me. All right. So the great thing about the corkboard is that what it will do is um, it's, it's kind of like index cards. You know, if you've, ever, if you've ever seen index cards, um, 
you know, if you've ever used them for your manuscript, you, you kind of put them on your table and you organize them. And, and each index card has a little synopsis of what happens in it. Well, that's what this is. And you'll notice here that I've got uh, some text in here, but if I double click, I can actually add, I can add some text in here and I can add as much or as little as I want. If you don't have anything in there, what it will do is it will default to what's already in your, what's in your chapter. So it will default to the first, first few lines of your chapter. All right. So I can even click and drag and move this around if I wanted to. And you'll notice I moved chapter one all the way down and you'll notice that it also changed in the binder. So chapter one is now way down here and I can even go in here and add it back and you'll notice it added it back in the binder. So everything you do here, you really can't screw this up. You know, it's gonna, it's gonna adjust it in the binder accordingly. And this is a great because it allows you to take a look at what's happening in your story from a synopsis standpoint. So if you remember when I was in the inspector, I, should, I added that little section to the synopsis. This is where your synopsis shows up, okay? So this is very, very useful. And it, they even take it a step further. If I go down here and select this, uh, this little icon down here and you hover over it, it's called the freeform corkboard. What that will do is it will allow me to move things around without changing anything in the binder. So I can, I can get as messy as I want. This is, this is kind of like the, a replica of that old school method where you would, you would take all the index cards and you just throw them on a table. <laughs> and then you try to figure out uh, what, what happens and uh, piece them all together. Uh, this is a great way to do that. I, I, can do, I can get this as messy as I want. It won't do anything um, to, to, the, to the manuscript, which is great. All right. So now I'm going to show you the, uh, a feature that is very, very helpful. And that is called the threaded corkboard. So the corkboard, this is great too, but it takes it even further. This is why Scrivener is such a great app because it, it, just, it just builds on things that were successful. So I, I showed you the index cards here. And a few minutes ago, um, I said, uh, wouldn't it be great if uh, you use labels as for characters? So I showed you the labels and I, I created some labels based on my characters, all right? So what I'm gonna do here I'm going to go into a couple of my chapters and I'm just going to assign some labels so I can, I can right click and I can select labels and I'll say that, uh, you know, maybe the first few chapters are Lester chapters. Just, you can just get here by right clicking and go into label. And then maybe the next couple chapters are bow chapters. And then I've got some Lester chapters again. All right. And I want to show you what this looks like when you tag all of your files in, with labels, okay? So I'm gonna go back to the corkboard. I'm gonna click on manuscript because you have to be on the top level of your manuscript. I'm gonna click on manuscript and then I'm gonna go to the corkboard. And then on the bottom here, there's this little icon. It says arrange by label, okay? So I'm gonna click this and then it gives me a little timeline. So you can see here, the first couple are Lester because it's red. And then if I scroll over, you can see, okay, well, it jumps down to the next character. Oh, and okay, then chapter five, it jumps up to the next character and then it jumps down. So you can arrange your novel on a timeline based on your characters, which is really, really helpful. Um, the, they call this the threaded corkboard because you can, it, it's basically like a thread and you can use that uh, to track it based on your labels. So this is a very powerful feature in Scrivener uh, and something that I would highly recommend that you play around with, particularly if you have a novel that has a lot of different main characters, helps you, helps you keep them straight. All right. All right. So now what I want to talk about is the, so we, we've talked about a lot so far. I've thrown a lot at you and I want to just kind of finish with talking about the, probably the most powerful and the most misunderstood and the most confusing part of Scribner. <laughs> so everything I showed you here, I really, I, I kind of gave you a, a Cliff Notes masterclass Scribner class. Like you, you, you will be able to, to get in, you could rewatch this video, you'll be able to get in and you'll be able to do probably 80%, 85%, maybe 95% 
of what you need to do with Scrivener on a daily basis. So learning the ins and outs of, of writing, outlining, and editing, not that complicated at the end of the day. Now, when you're done with your book and it's time to export your book to, to ebook or Microsoft Word, this is where it gets a little complicated. All right. So just a fair warning, you know, I've been using Scrivener since uh, 2007, <laughs> 2008, 2007, something like that. I, I, I was one of, I was, I was around when Scrivener one existed. Um, and when Scrivener two came out, it was great. And Scrivener two had a, a, a compile feature and um, they did, they, they made it better. And it was complicated back then because there were a lot of boxes you had to check and there was just a lot of things that could go wrong. And I remember spending several days and hours just trying to learn how to, how to create an ebook. Scrivener 3 has simplified that. They've made it a lot easier, but it's still, when you see it for the first time, it takes a minute to wrap your head around how it works. Um, in, in some respects, it, it feels like they made it more complicated, but they didn't. But when you see how it actually works, you'll see it's actually not that bad. Um, the power of compile is that you have the ability to change the look and feel of every element of your ebook. So if there's any, if there's anything you've ever seen in, e, in an ebook, you can do it with Scrivener. You just have to know how. And so compile provides a lot of firepower under the hood so that you can do that. All right. So we're just going to go over a very basic compile today. And uh, just, just know that in order to, to get this under your belt, what you're going to have to do is spend some time really playing with this, experimenting with it, and exporting a lot of files that you're going to throw away. Okay, just, just be prepared for that mentally. And once it clicks, the, the, the best part about compile is when it clicks, you'll never forget it. You, like, you, you won't make the mistakes ever again. It just takes a minute to, to understand it. All right, so we're gonna go over it real quick. And uh, what I'm gonna do is select compile. And that's just this little share button right up here. And this, this brings up a screen. And first thing we wanna choose is what we wanna compile for. So if I click this little button here, I can compile for a number of different things. I can compile, if I scroll up for PDF, rich text, Microsoft Word, both versions of doc files, um, HTML, but probably the one that most of you will be compiling for is EPUB. Okay. So I, we're going to compile for EPUB today and just know that Scrivener has a lot of things that can compile to. And uh, I'm just going to delete this because we're going to recreate it. Now on the, I've got some formats here that I've created. You can ignore these, but on the very bottom, Scrivener has some formats that it has automatically done for you. It, it's done a lot of the heavy lifting for you. You just have to kind of pick which one works best. All right. So I've got this ebook one down here. I'm going to click this and then um, we're going to create our own. So we're going to double click it and it's going to ask us, we have to duplicate it. So we're just going to hit yes. And then we're going to ignore this and hit save. And then you'll see here under project formats, it's got this ebook copy. It's just because we had to create a copy of it so that we don't destroy the original. Okay. So you'll, I'll, I'll draw your attention to two areas. The first area here is the section layout panel. All right. And then the, the second one is uh, that's going to look familiar. These are all the documents that are in your binder. These are the documents that I brought in and imported. And what you'll notice is that over here in the right, each document has what's called a section type assigned to it. So this one is a dedication. Scrivener put some front matter in there for the template. So we've got, we've got a dedication here that's assigned as front matter. You'll notice that over here, we've got a section layout called front matter. Over here, we have chapter one that has a section type of, it's called section. Well, if I scroll down here in the middle, over here, we've got a section type called section. So what is over here is what it's going to look like over here, okay? So when I look at the section, what I want to decide is what I want this to look like, okay? When I'm looking at the front matter, I want to decide what I want this to look like. So we can, we can start to customize this. We're going to ignore the front matter for this because that's it's not terribly important for what we're going to do. 
But for, for, for this year, we can start to play around with the look and feel for what our chapters look like. So if I click this assign section layouts button down here on the bottom, I can bring it up and um, it's already selected for me. And what I'm gonna do is there's a bunch of different options because it says choose layout for section documents. I'm just gonna scroll down here and, and see if there's anything that, um, anything that looks good. So we're gonna scroll down and uh, we, we've, we see the title up at the top, but we're gonna, just gonna keep going. And now we've got uh, some things here that don't even have the text here. So we want the title and we want the text on each chapter, right? So we want it to say chapter one and then blah, 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 blah for the text. So we're gonna scroll down. Just gonna keep looking, see if there's anything that looks good. Okay, now we see some, some chapter ones here. That's kind of nice. So we, we want the chapter name in in the text. So we'll keep scrolling down. And okay, this looks a little bit better, doesn't it? This looks a little, this, this looks kind of similar to what you would see in an ebook. And we'll keep going. Oh, there we go. That's what I want my, that's what I want my chapters to look like. So that's all this is that you're just choosing what you want each element in your book to look like. And because for this book, we only have one element, we want it to look like this. So I'm just going to hit, hit select this. And I'm going to click OK. And you'll see here if I scroll down in my section layouts panel that this is what my sections are going to look like. And if I click on this, it's going to highlight all the sections or all the chapters that are going to look like this. So you'll see here that all of my chapters were highlighted, which is very useful. OK, so I know that all of my chapters are going to look like this. If I go up here to front matter and I click the front matter, then I know that all of my selections are gonna look like. This is the only selection that's that's classed as front matter. All right, so that's, that's, that's basically how you choose the look and feel of your book. Uh, it's a lot more complicated than that, but we're gonna keep it simple today. And if I go over here on, on this uh, panel here and I select this little tag key, I can actually change the metadata of my book. So I can, I can, I can type in the title of the book I can add the author of the book, and there's some other fields here, but they're not they're not really necessary. Okay, and then I can even add the cover of my book to be compiled. So if I click on this little cover image here, this will take me to a select where I can select what image I want. Now you have to add your image in the binder. You know, remember I showed you how to import an image. As long as you add your cover into the binder, it'll show up under underneath this navigation here. All right. So it really is that simple. All right. And then if I click this little button over here, I have some options for my table of contents, which I don't recommend that uh, you need to change. But if you want to change the name of your table of contents page, I want to change it to just say contents, then I can do that. So we're ready to compile. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to compile and then I'm going to name it something. We'll save it. Just takes a couple of seconds. And then it likes to open up. It likes to open up the file automatically. I don't know why I had mine do Microsoft Edge. That was a, I probably should have just accidentally clicked away from that. But what I'm gonna do is I am going to open this up in a, an EPUB previewer that I have. It's called Adobe Digital Editions. This is free, all right? And um, this is my ebook. So you can see what the ebook looks like. So you can see the contents page here and you can see all my chapters laid out. And if I start clicking around to the chapters, well, look at that. It's got my chapter here and it's, it's already sequential. So you don't have to worry about typing. Remember I told you earlier, you don't want that, you don't want that chapter title on the top of, up top of your manuscript when you import it into Scrivener. This is why, because Scrivener just takes what's in the binder title and puts it on top. So if I, if I, if I didn't do that, what I would have here is chapter two, and then right below it, it would say chapter two. And see, that's why you don't want that. So I can click all over the place. I can go to my table of contents here. And you can see here, everything looks really good, right? So that is, in, a, in, a, in its simplest form, how to use Compile in a way to help you get an acceptable ebook that you can publish on Amazon, Kobo, Barnes & Noble, Google Play. And you can get that in just a few clicks.
All right. Now, if I wanted to go back into Scrivener's compile, there, there, there are some other things I could do if I wanted to. So I'll, I'm back in Scrivener here. I'll click this compile button. And if I wanted to, I could peek under the hood a little bit and start tweaking some things. I'm just going to show this to you so you know it's there. Okay. So if I click the format that I just created here over on the left called ebook copy, I'll double click that. And this opens up a Pandora's box of uh, features here. This is, this is what the Scrivener compile used to look like. And there's a lot to wrap your head around in some of these features here. Um, but I can, I, can, I can start to adjust the look and feel of my sections. Um, I can change the separators between the chapters. So maybe I, I, want, I want a section break, but maybe I want some asterisks too at the end of each chapter. Um, I can change a number of different things. And so un here is, is where you can really start to, to witness the power of compile. You know, you can do things like, um, you know, some books where they have like on the chapter heading, like they put images there. So, you know, like if I've got a dragon book, I'll have chapter one, but then I'll have like a image of a dragon next to the, next to the chapter on you or next to the the name on either side. This is where you can start to do some of that too. So there's a lot of functionality here. I'll cancel out of this, but just know that you can start to tweak things by click, double clicking on this. And this will take you to uh, a place where you can do that. So compile is, it's, it's a lot simpler for Scrivener 3, um, but it does, take, it does take just the same amount of time to really understand it and wrap your head around it. When you can wrap your head around it, then it'll make sense. And then you'll be like, okay, this is great. Um, if you, for some reason, can't wrap your head around it, I just recommend using Vellum if you use Mac. Um, it's expensive, but it, it kind of eliminates you having to go into compile. Um, but you know, that's your choice and Vellum is, is, is pretty expensive, but there are, there are other alternatives out there. There, there, there. there are some people that like Scrivener compile just because it's convenient. And there are other people that, that they just kind of get into it and they realize, you know, this really isn't for me. So I just encourage you to play around with it. See if it makes sense. See if you can, you can get it to a point where it's intuitive for you. And if you can keep at it, if you can't just know that there are other alternatives out there to help you um, create beautiful eBooks. All right. So Christina, that, that is, that's all I had for this. Um, I can certainly uh, jump into questions and, and uh, start digging into more questions that folks have. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Michael. Um, yeah, that was just a brilliant, a brilliant overview of Scrivener. Um, so just a quick note on the compile option. So you can compile it for ebook, as Michael said, but also for just simple things like Microsoft Words, uh, PDF. So if you want to send something off to your agent, if you want to send something off to your mm -hmm. editor, uh, if you're submitting to a, a competition or, you know, you're querying, whatever, you can do it for Microsoft Word as well. And like I said, and just like Michael showed you, it's just like magic. Everything just yeah. fits in together really beautifully. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to stop the recording for YouTube.